so blessed to have this great man of God back with us again today. And more than anything else, I know there's a lot you have to say. We didn't have enough time at the first interview to cover a lot of things. But, you know, tell us a little bit more about how you got inspired from being a Muslim to having this revelation of God in you as a man who was hurt. And now you're able to impart this to other people and, and, and bring it from this inspiration out of other people's life. How, how did that transition really take place? I, I guess the thing that really happened, I pretty much tried, I pretty much have done everything a man can do. Mm. And it still left me bankrupt. When I was a Muslim, I lived in Atlanta and we'd be making what we call Salat prayer five times a day and the first one would be 5.30 in the morning and I'd raise my hands and turn to the east and I'd start praying in Arabic and what would come to my mind is what about Jesus? Mm -hmm. What about Jesus? And I wasn't even saved. Mm -hmm. I didn't know nothing about being saved. And then years later, I just different experiences that I ran into were drawing me closer to becoming more spiritual. Mm. And I was in the transit of meditation and things of that nature, but none of it never filled it completely, and I wanted to be around holy men. Uh, when I lived in uh, Massachusetts, I had said I was a director of a drug program, mm -hmm. and I got involved with women in the program, and eventually uh, it was a, I got a front page write-up. And I begin to look back on my life, and I begin to say, see that all the things I said I'd never do, I'd done. My marriage had broken up. Uh, uh, I was, I got ran out of that city where I was living then. Uh, every city I lived in, I had to leave. Mm. And I came to the end of myself, and the thought that came to my mind is, I must not be in charge of my life. And I got frightened because I said, if I'm not in control of my life, who is? Mm -hmm. And maybe they may want to do something to me. I, I got to get control. I got to get control. Mm. And I had a brother that lived in uh, Dayton, Ohio. And I went to visit him, and he was telling me about this Jesus and being born again and all this stuff. And yeah. I was saying, man, I don't want to hear that white man's religion <laughs> and all that, you know. Mm -hmm. And I noticed he changed. He did the dishes. He mm -hmm. helped cook and all this. You know, no real brother don't be cooking <laughs> and doing dishes, you know. And uh, But this, this struck me because he was one year younger than me. And he seemed like he was more old and mature, more responsible and steady than me. Mm -hmm. And he... He asked me to read the Bible for one week, mm -hmm. and then he wouldn't bother me about it anymore. Mm. At the end of the week, the job was there mm -hmm. inside of me, Crazy. and uh, I, I was living there at my brother's house with my girlfriend, mm -hmm. who's now my wife, and uh, I called her and I said, the wages of sin is death, the wages of sin is death. This is what my brother was showing me in the Bible, mm -hmm. and she said, I know it. So I said, how do you know? <laughs> she said, I used to be saved. Mm. Everybody knew it but me. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I guess the answer really for me was that I came to the end of myself. Mm. I, I had no more answers. I had no more moves to shoot. Um, I had come from being a, a, a well-known figure down to nothing. Mm. And I couldn't understand what was going on. And I was hurting inside. Um, I was crying inside, and when uh, I began to start trying to find out about the Lord, that began to change, mm -hmm. and a tremendous peace came upon me, a yeah. peace I had never had all my life. It was turmoil, turmoil, turmoil. Mm -hmm. uh, I had never been quiet, and um, this was the beginning. Mm -hmm. I guess I was quiet once in jail, <laughs> you know, and the Lord was visiting me there, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what it was. No. No, but it's it's been so awesome for me because I've seen how the ministry has touched the lives of a lot of people, thousands of people, oh, mm -hmm. God. and even in our church uh, in Detroit, yeah, a good number of the brothers that are now ministers and elders and whatnot have been on drugs, have been in prison, have been in jail, and all these kinds of things, and to see their lives change, oh, yes. and to see their marriages come mm -hmm. together, and see their children come together, and to see men of character, mm -hmm. character in virtue you know it's not about uh, shortcuts and this and that it's about being real you know the 
uh, could I just read Isaiah 61? Yes, yeah, go on. That's, uh -huh. That is uh, the chapter the Lord gave me when he first touched me, mm -hmm. and that's the chapter of our ministry, as well as the ministry of Hezekiah, to tear down the false places of worship mm -hmm. and to erect the truth. And truth can't come unless the truth is in our heart. Yeah. So those things that are not truth have to be removed. Definitely. And I have to allow the Lord to show them to me because he mm -hmm. says man doesn't know his own heart. <laughs> In spite of what we say. That's right. That's right. But anyway, I, this is from the um, uh, Amplified. I'd just like to read the uh, first verse. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed and qualified me to preach the gospel of good tidings to the meek, the poor, and afflicted. He has sent me to bind up and heal the brokenhearted, mm. to proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives and the opening of the prison and of the eyes to those who are bound. Um, and it's sad because what I read applies to a whole bunch of Christians mm -hmm. that are in churches yeah. right now. Yeah. Pastors, ministers, and whatever, what have you. That have to look within themselves for that inner healing that I know your church stands for. And most of us don't know how to do that. No. Because we've we been so regimented and conditioned to just go through the motions and do this and do that. And not intentionally, but we believe that's God. And I know God has given you an anointing with so many people healed in your church as to a formula of some sort. Amen. Is there Amen. a beginning? Is there a beginning of this? The beginning is to get enough courage, mm -hmm. to be honest. My Lord. To get enough courage, to be honest. It's to be hard. honest with yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. With yes. yourself. It's mm -hmm. hard. Because once I admit that I'm not happy and I'm serving the Lord and I'm a pastor and I'm a this and I'm a that, if I say I'm not happy, then it means God can't do no more for me than what he's done mm -hmm. and now I'm lost but the problem is it's not God that has done it I've, I'm, I'm operating in religion mm -hmm. yes and the definition of power in the world is very different from the definition yes. of the peace yes. and the power within yes. of the walk yes. with God, isn't it? Yes, I went from a position, I had bodyguards, I could point my finger at a man and he could lose his life. That's the kind of power I had. My Lord. And when I walked into a place, and people knew me, yes. mm -hmm. the mayor's office, the police yeah. chief, wherever. But then when I come to Christ, it's like, <laughs> you can't pass this gate mm -hmm. with all that stuff. No. So I'm saying, well, what do I go in with? Yeah. You say you go in with nothing. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, and it's like, yeah, but I can't go in with nothing because if something comes up, I don't have anything to defend myself. But nothing being an open heart. Yes. And to lay down your life. Yes. It's already been done. Yes. And our life, as we know, we are a spiritual being having a human experience, not yes. a human being having a spiritual. Nothing, if I could give it away, mm -hmm. that Amen. peace and Amen. that joy Amen. that comes with that walk. Amen. And I, I don't kid anybody. It has. I changed every aspect of mm -hmm. my life. Yes. To get it. But yes. you know what? Yes. The surprising thing was was how easy that. It was like you mentioned that decision to admit to yourself I've tried everything Amen. being yes. honest yes you know when you do the same mm -hmm. thing the Lord began to show me something he says when you keep doing the same thing over and over and keep getting the same results he says that's yes, insanity Lord. yes <laughs> that's insanity. Yes. Yes. I would do that. Yes. Yeah. You know, the same on drugs. I do the same thing over and over. Yeah. Yes. You know. Yes. You know, one of the things that got me, I think I mentioned to you, I have a son that just died. Mm -hmm. um, he died February the twenty second. He was twenty six years old. He was born yeah. with Down syndrome. And the amazing thing to me is that you know, you hear songs like Amazing Grace and the Grace of God and all these things, you know. And you hear, them, you hear those songs and uh, all the words and the scriptures. But God is empowering me with his grace to keep me together. Praise God. I try to cry in the morning. Mm -hmm. He says, this isn't the time for that. Yeah. He said, do this, do that. You know, and his grace just sustains me. So mm -hmm. now I'm moving into another level and another area of seeing another side of him mm -hmm. that's becoming real to me, mm -hmm. not just words and scriptures, but the more we die, the more space he can fill up inside of us Praise with God. more of him. Praise yes. God. You know, and so the key is, you know, do I 
really, you know, when I was on drugs, I knew if I stuck a needle in my arm and pushed in the substance in the needle, mm -hmm. something would happen. Mm -hmm. And I have to be the same way about Christ. Yeah. I have to know when I call upon Him, when I believe in Him, for what He says He can do, He'll do it if mm -hmm. I believe in Him, if I give Him an opportunity. And